guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today is Q&A Tuesday. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. I created my channel with the hope of sharing all the things that I know with all of you, the tips, the tricks, the behind the scenes stories about being a medical coder. So if you want more of this content, I hope that you hit the subscribe button. I hope you'll like this. And at the end, if this video helps you, I hope that you will share it. So let's get started. Now, what is Q&A Tuesday? Q&A Tuesday is the number one question and answer show about medical coding airing on Tuesday. So I take all the questions that come in uh, from, from viewer comments, from uh, emails, from Instagram, and I put it all into one episode. So here we go. Now, uh, a huge shout out to everybody who submitted a question. And if you want your question submitted and answered for next week's Q&A Tuesday, be sure to comment below or shoot me an email. All right, so let's get started. Okay, number one. I used to be a bio major, but couldn't handle the coursework and studying for the exam like that anymore. Switching to medical coding, would you say that it's hard? So asking me that question is very subjective. Everybody looks at medical coding from a different standpoint because everybody has a different educational background. Everybody has a different uh, discipline when it comes to studying. So what I will say is this, this is a field that requires a lot of study. This is a field for intellectuals, okay? It is very challenging intellectually, but it is rewarding. <laughs> it is rewarding in that it doesn't get dull. At least that is my opinion, okay? Uh, different people have different opinions about it, but I happen to love medical coding. So you're, you're asking an extremely biased person <laughs> uh, about this. Now, it takes a lot of study and it does take a lot of knowledge, but this knowledge is built over time. A lot of times when people get into it, they think, oh gosh, they get so um, overwhelmed with just medical terminology because they think they need to memorize all of these words. So I tell people, don't try to memorize the words, try to learn the prefixes, the suffixes, and the root words. This way, you have the little building blocks, you can put them all together, and then you'll know way more <laughs> medical terminology, and you don't have to necessarily memorize every single word, okay? Uh, but you're gonna know what it means because you know the prefixes, the suffixes, and the root words. So, it's entirely up to you, uh, but it, it is a challenge, and it's a good challenge, you know? Like I said, it is, um, it is very intellectually stimulating, so that is all I have to say on that one. Next question, do you have to memorize everything for medical coding? No, uh, you are able to use your books and you are able to use other materials and when you're taking your test, you can use your books. So you don't have to memorize, you just have to know and you have to learn the basics. And once you start learning the basics of like how to code and you start learning the rules, then that's really all you need. That is your jumping off point, okay? So that is just my advice on that one. Next question. When you take your certification exam, would you be able to use your book to look up the codes? Yes. Um, both associations, the American Health Information Management Association and the American Academy of Professional Coders, both have a list of approved books that you need to bring with you. Um, you can use these to look up the codes because obviously we're not able to use an encoder. And an encoder, if you don't know, is a computer program uh, for for codes, <laughs> but you're not able to use this uh, when you are taking your certification exams. So get familiar with the books that you are using. I'm gonna be doing a video later this week about the books that I recommend and what I like to use. I do like to use Optin360 coding books. I will say that. <laughs> this is not an ad for Optin360. However, I will leave the link for them down in the description box below. Now, with Optin360, they have a lot of really good and helpful information in their appendixes. So that is where I like to look for information. Now, if you have another book by another different publisher, uh, it may or may not have a comprehensive uh, appendix. So be sure to explore your book and make sure that you know where everything is. A lot of times these books include like the uh, anatomy plates and they've got lots of information about abbreviations, about medications and things like that. So very, very helpful with these books. I do recommend uh, for the CPT book, the professional edition by the AMA, which you need to have this particular book for both association exam tests, right? Uh, the CPT professional edition by the AMA <laughs> has lots of really good information in the back. 
It even has evaluation and management examples, okay, and the levels and so, to sort of help you to know where, um, where a certain level would be, what is like the average sort of level when it comes to certain different uh, evaluation and management levels. It's very interesting. I strongly, strongly recommend it. Okay, so next question. Can you work from home or any location being a coder? So when it comes to this question, there are remote coding positions. However, you are not able to take your computer, maybe you're using a laptop issued by the company, you're not able to take this willy-nilly everywhere. You have to be at one location because oftentimes if you are doing remote coding, and whether it is you know that you have to go to a place right now, but they're sending you home because of COVID, and you are working at home, they need to know the address and the location of where you're at uh, when you are coding from home. Uh, you're not able to do this remotely, like on the road and things like that. Remember, the internet connection needs to be secure. And so in order to do that, you can't be hopping around. These are people's very delicate, very sensitive information that we are dealing with, okay? So, and because of this, you have to be in a secure location. You can't just be in your living room willy-nilly connecting to the internet and your whole family's looking at your computer screen. You have to be in a secure location. When it comes to working remotely, it's a big responsibility. And a lot of times people want to get into medical coding because they want to work from home. And I totally understand that. Some people you know, live far out and they live too far away, or maybe they have little kids at home, or maybe they have a disability. There's a myriad of reasons why people want to stay at home. I totally understand. But when you are starting out as a brand new medical coder, this is not usually a possibility. Because of COVID though, it has changed the landscape a little bit. People are coding from home right now, brand new coders. I know because I've gotten a few emails from brand new coders who have gotten a job, it's their first job and they're coding at home, but they had to apply at a place that they had to physically go and they sent that person home. They know right now <laughs> we are in the middle of a pandemic, so we have to be able to code from home. So that is why they are coding from home, but it is just temporary. It is not meant to be like a long-term thing. Once uh, COVID gets under control and the hospitals fully open up their doors to all of the staff, then those people are going to have to go back to the office. So keep that in mind if you are wanting to get into this because you want to code from home. You need to have at least a minimum of three years experience before you can start working at home. And a lot of times people don't tell you that, like especially the recruiters from the schools, they don't tell you that you're going to need experience before you can code from home. Like I said, pa the pandemic changed the thing a little bit, but not too much. If you are brand new and you're trying to apply for a remote coding company, they're going to turn you down because they don't hire you unless you have experience. So that is the, the long and the short of it when it comes to remote coding. But yes, if you are coding from home, you need, or remotely, you need to be in only one location and you can't be hopping around like a jackrabbit everywhere. So I'm just saying, next question. Is it possible to be a manager by not holding a de bachelor's degree in health information management? Yes, it is. So uh, not all managers have degrees, okay? Some are the CCS and that's all they have is a certified coding specialist. Now, the Certified Coding Specialist is the gold standard of medical coding credentials, and it is offered by the American Health Information Management Association. This one credential says that you can code both inpatient and outpatient. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can get this, but most importantly, it is by an education requirement, by meeting that education requirement, or you have had to had, have had a credential plus experience or um, you have to go through a NAHIMA approved program. There's, there's a whole list, okay? But those are like the top three ways. And because of this, CCSs are considered to be more trained, like their programs, uh, the AHIMA approved programs, typically at a trade school, they're gonna run 18 months, okay? If you uh, go to AHIMA's online uh, program, it's self-paced and it's a whole year. So these people have had time to get trained. And because of this, 
Um, a lot of times CCS, they are holding positions of lead coder or supervisor. So they are able to get into that managerial side, um, but when it comes to like running hospitals or running whole departments, they are looking for like the bachelor's degree, the RHIA, or uh, if they're, they're gonna be leading a section, the RHIT. Okay, so next question. Um, I wanted to know if you think the bubbling and highlighting the CPT manual technique is worth the time for taking the CPC exam. So I am not certified with uh, AAPC, I don't have the CPC, and I have heard of that bubbling and highlighting technique. To me, it's a personal choice. If that's what you wanna do, by all means, go for it. I am, <laughs> I am very particular when it comes to my books. I don't like to write in them, I don't really like to highlight them either, because I feel like too much clutter on the on like too much of like highlighting and, and writing it's going to mess me up when I'm looking up codes okay there are like some things that I write just maybe a couple of words or something like that but very rarely because I don't really like to write or highlight in my books so if that's what you want to do that's totally fine um, but for me like I I don't know anything about that I I don't do it because that's not what I do uh, but if you find it easier by all means, go for it. <laughs> all right, next question. Oh, okay, so this is in response to a comment. So the, the viewer had commented on a video where I was talking about remote coding for beginners, right? And they said, get your best friend to say that you worked for them. So here's the thing, you can't lie on your uh, employment uh, application, okay, when it comes to remote coding. Because the thing is, if you've never worked in, in remote, in, if you've never worked in coding at all, or maybe you have, um, but you don't have that much experience and you tell your friend, hey, can you lie for me and say that I've worked for you for three years? Okay, what's gonna end up happening is if you end up sliding past their background check, because they're gonna background check you, so they're gonna make sure, right? Uh, but if you manage to slide past that background check, and you start to code from home and you have no idea what you're doing because you're, you're brand new and you haven't had any experience yet in coding, they're gonna know like that. Really? We thought that you had all of this experience in coding, so what's, what's that all about? You're gonna find yourself without a job if you lie. So don't lie, guys, and don't even think that you're gonna be able to get away with it because you're not. These people do background checks these background checks are very important because you have all kinds of things going on, guys. HIPAA, you've got a lot of different things that people need to know that they can trust you. So don't even try it, okay? And don't even think about it. Be very honest. Now, it's, you're just gonna, it'll come with time, right? It'll come with time and eventually you'll be able to work from home if you like. Um, but you do need to get your experience in. Everybody goes through this, okay? Now, right now, because of uh, the pandemic, some people are, are very lucky in the fact that they are their first job is working at home. <laughs> I mean, it, it does take a lot, but because of this, you know, that's the, the result. But that's okay. At the same time, guys, don't even try to think about lying, okay? Because you will be found out. Next question. What about knowing the signs and symptoms of diagnoses? So I recommend the Merck manual and I'm gonna leave a link for the Merck manual that I recommend down in the description box below if you're interested. Um, I am going to be doing a different show about what I recommend the study materials like I mentioned earlier. Uh, so that way you guys can see what I recommend. Uh, I only recommend the things that I think are most helpful, okay, and the things that I've used before previously, okay, or that I know of <laughs> and that I want to get my hands on. <laughs> so that's my advice on that one. Next question. Once I am certified, is it easy to find a job and do it from home part-time or full-time? So uh, when you are a brand new coder, it is a challenge to get a job the first time. I am going to be doing some some other additional videos about that. I really recommend that you guys do not get discouraged when you are first out because you, when you are applying, you are going to see that they are going to be asking you to have experience. 
It is going to depend on the language of the uh, ad, right? But at the same time, I still recommend uh, that you apply even though they are asking for experience because if you don't, then you're not going to apply anywhere, right? Because everywhere is going to say that they want experience. This is something that happens to brand new medical coders. And if you are a brand new medical coder, you can forget about uh, working part-time. And the reason that I say this is not to be mean, but it's to be the truth, right? Because brand new coders do not get hired part-time. Why? Because the place that you're working at is not going to be able to get a lot of experience, like a lot of uh, production out of you experience, <laughs> a lot of production out of you because they're going to have to be training you. So if somebody is working like 15 hours a week or 20 hours a week, and they're going to spend a, the bulk of that time asking questions because book coding and real world coding is two different things. Okay. How questions are asked in a book, in a textbook are very straightforward and to the point. They're not going to try to throw all of these tricky ones at you like when you are out in the real world and you have to deal with these providers who have their own colloquialisms, who have their own way of documenting things. You have to learn about that provider. And so because of this, you are going to be asking lots of questions because yes, you may know the fund fundamental basics of how to code, but it doesn't mean that you're going to know everything right off the bat. So asking questions is going to take time and people are not going to be hiring a brand new coder to work part-time. Um, and, and going back to what I said earlier about, uh, the remote coding for brand new coders, that's just a thing of the industry. I mean, that's what they do. I can't blame them for, for saying that you have to have experience before you can code at home because think about it. You're, you're literally trusting somebody with people's a lot of information. Okay. A lot of, private information, their medical history, their, uh, their insurance numbers and their social numbers. You know what I mean? It's like it's a lot of different information. And yes, I would want to make sure that the person knows what they're doing before they start working at home. And it doesn't really matter why they want to work at home, uh, right away. Okay. Because that has no bearing or influence on a employer. Okay. The employer is going to do things that are going to benefit them. Okay, they want somebody that they can trust at home to do all of this coding and things like that. They want somebody that knows what they're doing and has a strong background in coding already. And that's understandable. Uh, when you are able to work at a place where you have to physically go, you can ask questions. You can get more confident because you're going to know what you're doing after a while. When you are uh, able to access people right away and and ask questions and you can go over things instead of having to be on the phone or trying to type up an email because typing up an email is going to require you to know the technical side of how to ask the question because sometimes you're not going to know how to ask, ask the question, uh, let alone <laughs> what you're looking for. So because of this, you want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success right away when you are a, a brand new medical coder. Okay. So that's just my advice on that one. Um, but yes, uh, like I said, in the pandemic right now, it'll be temporary and then you'll have to be back at the facility. So, and the last question. So it's going to be a little bit of a, Hmm, how do I say, uh, how do I say this? I'll just go ahead and say, <laughs> when somebody tells me that they passed their, their certification exam or they got a job, the first thing I do is I am on my uh, community tab on YouTube and I'm telling the world, Hey, we got a brand new coder or somebody got a job. Or in the instance of one, I, I said she was so happy because she, she just decided that she wanted to do uh, medical coding and she was doing it not just for herself, but for her kids as well. I was so excited for her. I announced it on my, uh, YouTube community tab. And then I take that same announcement and I put it on my Instagram. <laughs> so yeah, I tell the whole world, but here's the thing. I did this for one, one viewer. She, uh, just passed her CPC exam, right? And she was so excited. She messaged me and I'm so excited for her because she has watched my videos for quite some time. And, um, the thing is when I, when I post it, right, it's all about what I like 
is when I see people building other people up, right? And, and, and the response is usually really great. I get like a lot of likes and then people say congratulations and things like that. Here's the thing. I believe the energy that you put out is what you're going to get back in. This is me naturally congratulating people and being excited for them. This is a good example of you really have to think about what you are saying and how you are saying it. Because when you are putting out energy into the world and maybe it's a little bit negative and maybe it's a little bit, um, you know, maybe there might be a little bit of jealousy in there. You have to sort of learn to work with that because again, what you put out is what's going to come back because the comment was congratulations. If you get a job, let me know. I had my CPC since 2018 and I haven't got a medical coding job yet. That was a response from another viewer. So what I said was I have had quite a few viewers who have just got their credentials and they got a job within a few weeks during the pandemic. Let's just congratulate her. She did an amazing job and this post is for her. So it is about being part of somebody else's joy, being a part of somebody else's uh, congratulations and being sincere about it. Now, I don't know what this, uh, what this viewer's uh, resume looks like. I don't know where they live. I don't know why they haven't gotten a job. But I will say this, and I've said it on many of the videos that I've done. You can't give up when it comes to looking for a job. There are many reasons why people are not getting jobs. Either they cannot pass a background check. They do not pass the interest assessment test when they're getting assessed. Like, because you, um, you have to show what you know, okay? And a lot of times these facilities, everywhere you go, they're going to give you a test. Some tests are 20 questions, some are 50 questions. It all depends. So there's that. What does the resume look like? How are they presenting themselves at an interview? Are they applying everywhere? Because sometimes when people say, oh, I'm applying. How many places do you apply? Four places. Why? Why would you only apply at four places? You have to get serious and you have to get to the point where you are applying everywhere for a uh, medical front office, for medical records, for medical billing. You know, you may not start out in medical coding right away, but eventually you can work up to that if you are working around um, the people that are doing the hiring because it is about making connections because it's not always going to be right out of the gate that you're going to be able to get a job. Now I've told um, on, on previous videos, I've told you guys to apply at temporary agencies. There was a temporary agency in my hometown where I applied and they had jobs for medical field positions, right? And so they, they hired temporary doctors, nurses, LVNs, MAs, and medical coders. So that was how I started getting experience because I worked at these temporary positions and then I was able to move on and go to another position. And from there, I was able to get more experience. So all the assignments that I got put on got to fill up my resume. And that was how I started getting experience in order to get in. Okay, so I still had less than one year of experience by the time I got my position here where I am now. But because I had done so much during that time, right? My first uh, assignment was three months. My second assignment was eight months. And so during that time, I had picked up a lot of skills. I had done um, oncology coding. I had done coding for inpatient professional services or pro fee coding. So that put me in an arena with a lot of different uh, specialties. So that completely filled up my resume. But it is about being very steadfast in the fact that, yes, you are going to get a lot of rejection in the beginning, but it's no reason to give up. OK, so when somebody tells you that they passed their test or somebody tells you that they got a job, try to genuinely be happy for them because that's the energy that you're going to be putting out. And that's the energy that you're going to get back because being negative or being like, well, I can't get a job. I haven't gotten a job. We don't know what your situation is, but always try to think of what you're saying, even even when you're saying something like that. 
Think of what you're saying before you say it, because that's other people. And let's just be happy for this lady because she passed her exam. I know it was hard for her. I know that she studied and she worked hard. She's got it now. And I am very excited for her. And that I want you guys to know that everything that you put out is what you're going to get back in. So I'm going to leave it right there <laughs> because again, um, it is about being the entire package. When you are a medical coder, you need to look at everything. And that includes your own personal outlook and your own personal attitudes. Okay. So I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope that you'll join me tomorrow. If this video helped you share it. All right, so I will uh, close this one up. If you're a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider, or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.